Hello there, Beard here. The next one. And you have... Here's, here's the big spoiler he's about to release. So Edge happens to be someone's sister. Edge is Skaper's sister. She has amazing tight control. She runs at defenses. She'll take on anyone. Ball at her feet. She loves it. Good afternoon, handy listeners, such as you are, and welcome to this Wednesday, the 24th of July. I'm currently on a plane, uh, winging my way to Fatty Gunland uh, on my honeymoon. But in the meantime, and through the, the miracle that is podcasting, we're here to talk about Edge. And I am joined once more by my good friend, Mr. Panzer Harris. Hello, Panzer. Hello, Beard. <laughs> and of course, that other guy I know, Connor. Hello. <laughs> Edge. She's good. Yes. yes. Yes, here we are. Like we could start putting some excitement into these. We talked about knuckles. We had a very subdued Connor because it was fighting fish. Um yesterday, <laughs> also on Monday, we had Lane yesterday that we is interesting, but none of us really know how he's gonna go down well. Oh, Edge. So Skaith's <laughs> sister she does not disappoint, <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Um ridiculously fast but not so for um hunters you know yay car speed tack four can't have everything um 13 health and death four much like elaine that we talked about yesterday she's not going to last long in a fight fortunately she has plenty of tools to make sure she isn't in one for long <laughs> close control this is the first yep. piece of defensive tech you know like what i call token tech the hunters have like they haven't had a sturdy model, a sturdy, a stoic model, close control, anything like that. Um, and I think this is, although she's not a striker, we were talking about this yesterday with Lane, the fact that they're a one-inch striker. I think she's going to be used as one, so close control is needed. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I mean, the only reason she's not a striker is because they decided to have one of every position in the voting. I guess. <laughs> I mean, did you know Fathom isn't a striker? I mean, I. It's amazing to me that we've already started talking about fish. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we we're not we're two minutes into the podcast. The Rooney minute, two minutes five seconds. Um, this for me was the moment of the draft, or maybe the second moment of the draft for reasons that we will come to at another point. I'm sure. Um, the the. The hunters were amazing because they saved all of their votes until the final week and let everyone think whatever they wanted. And much like an actual hunter, they lay in wait and then pounced and they put except, all. Hmm? Except unlike a hunter, they basically spent the whole time yelling, "We are laying in wait about to pounce." <laughs> I mean, we are nerds on the internet. Let's. <laughs> let's okay, so, uh... so it's more of an Elmer Fudd kind of hunter. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, why isn't there an Elmer Fudd model in, in Hunters? That's amazing. <laughs> I need a Chaska. Get on it. I need, come on, Charles, uh, Russ. I need a, um, I need a Chaska alternate model. Uh, <laughs> yes. There we go. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, unorthodox yeah. we saw at Vengeance 4 mm -hmm. and is mental. Um, it's just seen. When this model makes a successful attack <laughs> against an enemy model suffering the snared condition, it may make an additional double dodge. She has a momentous dodge on one. Yeah, I was not yep. expecting that. She has a sister that hands out an additional double dodge. She has a the same sister that on her legendary turn has an aura of adding a further dodge. Edge, on one hit, can do a momentous... Dodge, 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 dodge. <laughs> a lot of dodge. <laughs> like that's longer than a where do you go? Yeah, yeah, it's longer than a where do you go? It's a where do you go and an acrobatic at the end. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of setup with you. 
there's there's a lot of setup in that. Um, there is, but I think only take one off activation. The legendary dodge, and I think it's actually not that hard to set up. I think getting the legendary dodge won't happen that much. No, but no, setting up the buff on her, and then just blasting two people with Skater's AOE that puts out snared, and mm. all of a sudden that's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk about Mirage before we talk about Entangle. Because I think we could spend quite a lot of time talking about Entangle. Um, once per turn during this model's activation, if this model is in the piece of rust ground, fast ground, or a forest, this model will be placed anywhere within that piece of terrain. I love this because it means she's got play with Theron and she's got play with Scather. Like, I think that's really yeah. nice, because especially when the combined with the light footed, like so many of the hunters have. Um, it just means yeah. that she she's got a teleportation effect regardless of which of the two um druidic captains she's with and i think that's really <laughs> cool the, the fact that she I can also, pull off similar tricks i also think yeah. it's good because i think with how much value she gets out of snared she actually already has a ton of synergy with steeljaw so it kind of bumps the other two captains a bit more back up for her Plus, she gains big game tracks with Steeljaw. You know, she has a mm-hmm. she has a further benefit with Steeljaw. She has the ability to put down traps. She has a push dodge on three. Admittedly, she's only tack four, um, so she has the ability to push people into her own traps. It's corner case, but it's there. You know, it's not to be discounted. Yeah, I think the important thing to remember with Mirage before people get too excited is no, you can't break a move, do the yeah, teleport, yeah, yeah. and continue your move. Yeah. Yep, it's not how this well. works. Very, but, yeah. very, very good point. The most value you'll typically get out of this outside of the captains is just when she dies, and oh, she's going to die. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Coming back on the side with fast ground, um, if you can basically just clip that fast ground, um, you can get like a few more inches. Um, yeah, it's, it's up to like or three even inches. if there's even if there's rough ground or forests like even more so on the side of the pitch if she can get into base with any terrain on her advance back on the pitch she then becomes massively fast i mean we've all gone to tournaments where they have that table with the six inch forest on it yeah mm-hmm. um and she's and unlike other people she's gonna love being on that table yeah, it's kind of like Hearn, where you sometimes will run him even in situations you normally wouldn't have, just if there is a perfectly placed forest. Mm-hmm. Um, an edge to a lesser extent, I think, mostly because she's more flexible on her own, uh, is going to have that same thing. Um, yeah, wow. it, it adds an, adds another edge to your kind uh, yeah. to, to your uh, to, to your terrain placement effects because if you you know if she's getting um grouped up on then you can play kind of play the forest defensively mm. um, yeah. you know and use it so, so when she activates she can teleport away and then disappear um so, so yeah the yeah, other thing to, the other the other thing to to bear in mind is i don't think this works with broken earth it does not no no so it's not like you can teleport around plowman that would be cool but no it would be cool. <laughs> It would be cool. Yeah, it, it, this is very specific. There are three examples of terrain this works with. Yes. So, treating Edge like a striker, because I kind of think she is more of a striker. She's a striker. Than yeah. I mean, she's, she's the hunter's um, version of a striker. So, you know, they're not going to be yeah. firing goals in from the halfway line, but they're going to do a bunch of stuff and, oh, they're by your goal. Yeah. Right. Um, I think Tac 4 is bad. Um, we can start off with that. Tac 4 is always bad, especially without any. One inch reach tack four is especially bad. That tackle, I was not expecting her to have a tackle dodge on one though. That's I know Angel has four. it and Siren <laughs> has it, but like you know, she has unorthodox. So I was thinking for sure it would just be a straight tackle on one. Uh, so having a tackle dodge on one means even if you can't get unorthodox off, she's still pretty good against one inch reach models at getting the ball, and mm. even not terrible at uh, two inch reach models because of close control. She's actually got a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses as um, Lane, who we discussed yesterday, um, in that the output is really good, but you have a you know the one inch reach striker issue and bad defenses. But I think actually Edge even more so than Lane 
because Lane at least had Tac 5 and had a viable dodge. Edge is going to suffer a lot from if you don't get the result on your first swing, yeah, you're yeah. not probably getting a second swing. Uh, this is why I think Snared is so key to Edge. Yes. Because yeah. Tac 4 is one thing, Tac, but Tac 4 against a 3 and 1 a 2 and 1 or a 2 and 2 or a 4 and 0 which is the most sort of you know common grouping of what she's going to be facing isn't bad like having their defense lowered makes tack 4 bearable i'm not saying it makes it good but it makes it bearable particularly if she's going into a snared target to start with um either because steel jaw or what scathe is AoE called? I can never remember. Cold Snap. Cold Snap, thank you. Because of Steel Jaw or Cold Snap or Bolas or um, Hunter's Prey or anything like that, or Entangle on herself, like Snared turns her on in the same kind of way it turns on Fahad. Like, if it's not a Snared target, can you wait until it is? Yeah. And not just because the, the math that changes to um, to dice math, but for the what I'm entitling the entangle tango, where if you can go <laughs> into a snare target and hit the two damage double dodge entangle onto another target within three inches, oh. and hit them, who is now snared. And do another two damage double dodge and tangle and go. I had not even thought about that. (laughs) Like the ability to just dance your way around the pitch is going to be hilarious. (laughs) That's pretty good. Yeah, me and me and Rich were scheming about this one yesterday. (laughs) Yeah. In who like if I if you coming if you're coming into me with a model that I know has a triple dodge on one, who's declaring that counter? (laughs) <laughs> like realistically yeah. who is declaring that t- that counter and she's got blessing of the moon goddess on her as well right which is <laughs> not that hard to set up no. i think i think edge is by a mile the best model in this guild now to score at the turn one receiving goal 100 um yeah. also that was the only thing in the entire guild that Ulfer was the best at. So, uh, R.I.P. <laughs> Ulfer. I think she's a great ball retrieval piece as well. If they just happen to kick near, you know, if you happen, to, if you've got a position near a forest or a piece of rough ground where you can teleport in and then move back, like that's really strong. Yeah. The only thing I will say is much the big struggle of footbally hunters now, because mm. I think they're a lot more playable now that they have edge is. The team just does not have anything to deal with the opponent just putting Nasha in the corner with the ball. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think you, sp- like, you springboard you off somebody s- else and dodge in that way when you've got five or six dodges. Yeah, but that's what I mean. You just don't put any opponents near it. You don't have the pillar to bounce off. Yeah. Like, mm. you just put... If you just put a two-inch reach or anyone with Unpredictable on a wing, like, oh, brisket... Uh, you need basically multiple models of your own to be there to get it, at and which point their whole other team is free to do whatever. Now, that's always been a weakness of the Hunters. Like, um, is it so bad that that continues to be a weakness for the Hunters? No, I don't think it's bad. It's just something you definitely need to consider, and I do think it is bad enough that Hunters will not be a team you want to try and ever be a 3-0 Line oh, up yeah, with. Yeah. I, I, think I agree entirely. And I'm, if it's I'm that sort of situation, up, but... that's that's where Steel Jaw comes out. Always like, oh. take the bear. Just take the bear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So Panther, you have, you, have, you have a blog coming out about this today. So Panther, remind <laughs> yeah. us what is the the web address for your blog? Scoring for me that. That's the one. Scoring for fun. Dot blogspot. For scoringforfun. Where yeah. hopefully right now there is an article discussing this, but we have been very lucky to be sent a preview copy of the model for Edge. Panzer, you have her in hand. I do, yes. Uh, she is. Uh, I built her last night while stacking the Mickey because you guys haven't got your models yet. <laughs> Thank Dad. You. 
Um, <laughs> naturally, please don't get, please do and go and read Panzer's blog, and you'll be able to see pictures, presumably, that he's taken of the model, so you can yep. have a good look at it. Anything you want to say about the cast whilst we've got you here? Um, I, I think the thing to note is I think this is um, a marginally different material. Okay. Um, because I've you know I've, I've built I think pretty much all of the uh, the resin captains as they come out either for my for my own uses or for other people. Mm. She feels it, there's a it's a more plasticky edge to it. It's um okay. it's more robust. You know it, it's like you Kai um you and your seventy two day odyssey to encaser in resin <laughs> um. To, to, to protect that standing leg I, I think they you know it feels a lot more solid it's like she has dual wheeled machetes mm. how that works with tack four i'm not entirely sure but hey, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. complain. It looks she's, she's got them i just don't think she knows yeah. what she's doing with them yeah <laughs> she's a dual wielder at larp she looks cool but that's about it yeah but they you know they you know sitting here you know i'm tempting fate now so i'm knocking on any piece of wood nearby but they don't feel like they're going to just snap off instantly Fantastic. Yeah, it, it feels a lot a lot stronger. Excellent. So yeah, do go and have a look at Panzer's blog. Raise the no uh scoringforfun.blogspot.com and have a look at a little look at that. So as you come towards the edge of the craziness sorry, the end of the craziness that is edge. <laughs> same question that we've posed for all three of the free cities draft rookies thus far. What are we doing? What are we expecting out of her for four influence? Either lots of stared or a goal. Yep, probably a goal for the most part. Mm. Yeah, I, I think she's your close control breaker um, because I think Skaitha, uh, Skaitha has a tackle, but it's uh, yeah tackle on tackle on one, but there's no dodges built in. Mm. Whereas um, Edge has hers with dodges baked in. You can have either a single dodge or a double dodge tackle. Also, one of those examples where having a smaller playbook and lower attack is actually better. Uh, Mm Because against a snared model, Edge is a lot more likely to wrap to the double tackle than Skaitha is. Yeah. Great. And in her case, yeah, uh, you charge her in, wrap to one, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility. Um, Against a snared model, that's uh, two momentum, a double tackle, and five inches of dodge. I'm okay with that, funnily yeah. enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sort of saying, I, you know, I look forward to seeing her on the pitch. I'm not sure that's true. Um, <laughs> although she at least be. she'll be off the pitch a lot as well. She is um, going to die. Keep it, keep it, keep in mind. Uh, we all know how easy Ulfer dies. She has a worse counter attack, worse tack, and three less health. Unless you're snared. Yeah. Yes. If you're snared. Yeah, then, yeah. It's arguable. <laughs> If she if she gets a counter attack against the snared model, she's got a triple dodge on one. Yeah, yeah but against Alfred has a where they go on two. It's not that much. Which is once per turn. Yeah. So if yeah. he's used it in his turn, he's yeah. toast on the you know, he hasn't got it as a counter, whereas hers is, you know, always on. So this so the second half of the question we've been asking all week, what are you expecting out of her with no influence? Yeah, nothing. Nothing, I but I will like to say that whereas Lane, I think, with one influence also does nothing, one to two influence on Edge does actually quite a lot just by hand, being another option to hand out Snared. Not just yeah. that, and so a I team think that you... doesn't hand it out that easily outside their captains. The, the, like, the, 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 the big things here are Entangle is not tied to damage. It's not a damage component. So it's not like, you know do one damage, and then if they have suffered damage, take the snared condition like you might see with like Egret doing poison at range with Snapfire, which is perhaps the most comparable mm-hmm. thing. So you can do this into tough hide models. Like, you are hitting Anvil with this character play every single time you want. Um, equally, she is an incredibly mobile ball-killing piece with Mirage, a 7-inch sprint, and close control. Like... Yeah. She is getting away from you. Now, Egret is very good at that already, but then Egret, you don't always want that far away from the enemy because of how good Flurry is. Um, and lastly, I think you're both forgetting Last Light and Blessing of the Sundads, meaning that she can do Entangle for one momentum or for free off three... There's four models in Guild that can give her free character plays, effectively. Um, of the models we've seen so far, I think she does the most without influence also although yeah. most uh most of the 
things that give you momentum off character plays are reliant on damage. Sunstrike is not. So if you Sunstrike her with Theron, she can just snare four models and get you four momentum. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a good, that that a good point. That is a good point. But it is still a one-dice character play, and speaking personally, I don't have a good record with one-dice character plays. But there's, there's plenty of Def 2 models out there. Like the Colossus and the Anvils and the you know Hearth and the like of the world, yeah, mm. it's certainly doable. Yeah, but in that, if the defense too, why you necessarily you know, uh, yeah, I can see why you'd snare them for her benefit, but where, but when you're her, why would you snare them for somebody else's benefit when they're already defense too? Yeah, uh, I suppose the speed debuff and also just the fact that mm. it increases the damage of Fahad and uh, and Cena. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I yeah. retract my statements. That was rubbish. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. So, yeah, Edge. Um, I think Edge was a seminal moment in the draft because it really affected so much of what came afterwards. Um, and I'm. Yeah. yeah it's, do go and have a look at the um, the pictures that Panzer have got on his blog of Edge. That model is beautiful, quite frankly. Yeah. You remember we were talking earlier about uh, the Hunters cashing all their votes in? Mm. Uh, I. I um, at SteamCon on the Friday, I was sitting there making sure people cast their votes for games. Oh yes, and yes. The, on of, pundit of, duty. You know, oh yeah, um, and I, of the of the voters, um, I think hunters. I think it was only butchers who cast more votes, and hunters put thirty-one votes in, twenty-seven of them for Edge. <laughs> That's pretty uniform. They had a target. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How very, very uh, in keeping. And they screwed up the draft for everyone else. Thanks, you jerks. No, no, they didn't. No, no, the blacksmiths did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not popular amongst blacksmiths' quarters as it is. Um, <laughs> until next time, handy listeners, such as you are, we need a better outro. Just so weird. Oh, they're